Hi everyone, welcome to yet another exciting episode or if I would say a conversation on talent mindset, hashtag talent in talks, a string of fireside chats that you all have been loving and presented by LinkedIn Talent Solutions and the Economic Times. Get ready for an engaging conversation on how talent strategy is now a top priority for CEOs as the world of work undergoes tech-driven transformations, shifting workplace dynamics, and much more on the talent management strategies forefront. Joining me on the episode today are Atul Lal, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Dixon Technologies, in conversation with Ankit Khanna, Regional Business Head, North and East India, LinkedIn Talent Solutions. So for my viewers, and as you all already know, there's going to be no further delay into the conversation. Let's get ready for it. Of course, we encourage you to share your thoughts, reflections, and the questions in the comments as we embark on this learning supercharged conversation. And on that note, uh, it's over to you to kick off the conversation. The viewers are waiting and I will be back at the end. But yes, for now, the frame is yours. So, uh, welcome Atul uh, to this Talent Mindset Dialogue. And first, let me congratulate you on uh, achieving your organization with a vision of becoming the largest Indian EMS manufacturing company. Uh, and, you know, Dixon is growing by leaps and bounds. So, uh, I'll kind of kick off because today's discussion is about a talent mindset. And you as a leader of an organization that has grown so rapidly and is continuing to expand into multiple lines of business what does the talent mindset mean to you as a leader? And how important is cultivating a talent mindset within your executive teams to drive growth and innovation in your company? Thanks, Ankit. Thank you so much. So I deeply feel that for any business leader, the team surrounding you, you should have a deep conviction that their capability set in the domain that they're operating is ahead of you. And uh, as a leader, your role is more as a facilitator and consensus building. So that the team comes in together to execute. So that uh, empowerment, respecting the talent of your team member, are extremely important uh, elements for the growth of any organization. Uh, when you empower them, when you listen to them, when you respect their viewpoint, uh, that itself is a big thing. Now, this is at a broader level. In our kind of company, which is into electronics manufacturing services, it's an aspiration to become an engineering powerhouse. And when I'm looking at engineering powerhouse, therein you need talent which is expert in their domains. When I'm talking about, let's say, PNCs, robotics, digital transformation, uh, thermals, optics, that is where a different level of engineering skill set, deep understanding of algorithms, deep understanding of numbers and maths are extremely important elements. So one is on the softer side and second is bringing into the team people and uh, yeah, building up your team with deep understanding knowledge skill set in these domains. Amazing. I think uh, I mean, what really struck me is is about, you know, having team members who, who's, who, who, whose capabilities surpass you in their specific domains. And I think one of my managers once told me that, you know, the best leaders build teams and hire people who are better than them. Uh, so amazing I'm, to kind of hear. I have a deep conviction in this thesis. And uh, let me just share with you that my team members are much ahead of me. Wow. Yeah. 
th- those are gems to kind of hear from a leader uh, like you so uh, atul as you said you know hiring people who are experts in their domains or you know getting the best people into the team mostly employer brand is the face of the company in a talent marketplace and organizations attract some of the best talent bases the, their employer branding strategies so uh, i just wanted to kind of check with you uh, you know in terms of how how has your organization established your voice in today's highly competitive talent marketplace uh, i heard when we were earlier talking casually i heard about you know great things that you know do, do you do at dixon how do you kind of what are you doing to kind of communicate that to the outer world about such what a great place dixon is uh, to kind of come and work for so to be very candid i think we have a very long way to go a lot of good work is happening on the employee engagement side on wealth creation side for our people on their learning and development identifying the high performers mentoring them uh, taking them for an internal and external training defining their blueprint to the careers being very very fair and ethical in our relationships uh, trying to focus upon diversity gender diversity uh, empowering the middle management we're doing all that as far as the communication is concerned one obvious uh, platform that we are pursuing is yours but i think uh, we need to do much more on that uh, we are uh, branded as a great place to work uh, we but i think the communication from dixon side because we are a b2b company and to be very candid and i humbly accept i think we lack the skill set on that the communication definitely has to be taken to a different level so sure. um, and i think uh, you know i we, we looked at we do some surveys on linkedin and one of the things that kind of came out that today especially uh, you know millennials uh, and gen z uh, when they are kind of looking for a job they really want to kind of identify with the values of the organization and and the benefits and stuff so uh, I, uh, I, and i know that you know dixon is doing so much uh, and and i've seen your linkedin page as well so there's a lot of communication out there I, i in fact i mean you talked about your focus on prom- promoting diversity equity and in fact i read that in your annual report as well that dixon you know is focused on uh, creating an inclusive environment for all your employees uh, as as an organization in the manufacturing sector uh, i wanted to kind of ask you our lead our viewers would love to know that how can manufacturing organizations effectively attract a diverse pool of candidates when look re- when recruiting talent uh, how are you using any data or insights uh, to address skill gaps in in the, in your sector and in terms of your workforce strategy so we have campuses all around we have campuses in north we have campuses down south mm-hmm. down south we have our campus in andhra in tirupati and also kadappa district in down south we have been able to ensure a gender diversity almost of 45% ladies and 55% men uh, this is at the operator level and uh, it's amazing because these young girls when they come from places which are 20 25 kilometers from the campus when they walk into the campus initially they are so tentative uh, they're so fragile but three months of working is a transformation and that is what is so fulfilling that it changes a home it changes their persona it changes their demeanor we wish we could have done even more in north there are certain challenges because the social norms because ladies are not working in the night shift so we are working more towards gender diversity that is uh, one very major focus areas within next yeah. the second is that we pick up at the middle management level at the engineers level lot of fresh graduates from tier 2 tier 3 engineering colleges uh, we feel that they have a similar intellectual bandwidth and passion with the top engineering colleges offer they learn fast they are locals and they are able to deliver better 
where we are lacking in nixon is that the corporate level is still the diversity is minuscule so we are consciously working towards it and uh, we feel that in next 2 to 3 years a very significant percentage of our middle management in corporate is going to be is going to be diverse yeah yes absolutely i think uh, i mean in in the manufacturing sector especially in the north uh, we do hear that you know uh, being able to kind of build a diverse workforce especially gender diversity in the plant level is not uh, very easy but you know 45% gender diversity in the, in the south plants is amazing anything specific you are doing to uh, especially at the plant level to kind of make women employees more uh, comfortable or to kind of come in and work etc yeah yeah so let's say in south plant uh, we offer uh, all the facilities and safety norms uh, that a woman requires and uh, we have a lot of employment engagement activities at the women level there are creches there are training centers there are recreational rooms in the campus all that is there so in the south campus as i shared with you at the operator level at the workman level a gender diversity will keep on increasing i don't see that as a challenge uh, what i'm mentioning is at the engineers level mm. at the plant head level yes. uh, at the it department level there one needs to do much more and we are consciously working towards it in our various plants uh, at the account management level in the corporate services level we have a lot of women in our corporate hr i think the women share is much larger than men but i still feel that in the other departments we have a long way to go right. but i think at it our board uh, is extremely conscious of it and they keep nudging us in every meeting so we're at it and i think we're going to reach somewhere sure so uh yeah we we did talk about you know uh, getting talent however you know when we were talking you also talked about there's a lot of effort to kind of retain and grow talent which is there in the organization itself uh, in today's world we see that skills you know because technologies are changing so quickly skills also keep on changing very very rapidly uh, can you share how your organization is kind of investing in constantly enhancing uh, the uh, skills and competencies of your own employees how are you investing in their growth and development so we realize and we realize deeply uh, that lnd learning and development is an extremely extremely important area in which dixon has to work because we are in a high growth industry so we have uh, we are in the process of setting up three centers of excellence uh, our tirupati campus already has a center of excellence which was inaugurated just last month uh, which has a state of art infrastructure for training the machines the software the training modules the trained faculty the evaluation mechanisms retraining them a training calendar which is closely monitored internal and external faculty so it's already in place it has been rolled out in north one in noida and one in deradu it's in the process of getting set up and uh, the noida one i think will be operational by august and i think by september the deradu campus will be operational so these three centers of excellence are going to be kind of fountain head for training and development of our people apart from that we have rolled out a system of identifying the high performers wherein we mentor them there is going to be a mentor for every mentee and uh, their blueprint is going to be defined that where they would like to see them in the next 3 to 5 years the training program not only internal and largely external is defined for them wherein they will be sent for the best of colleges best of training institutes not only in india but even globally to take okay. them to a different level yeah interesting yeah so uh, atul i think uh, it was an um, interesting discussion and you know it's always great to hear from a business leader uh, what is their thought process when it comes to talent 
uh, we do also talk to a lot of chros and obviously talent is their key area but you know i'll close it out by just asking you as as you know somebody who's running the company what you know how important is talent in in your success metrics or or your kra as as a leader how important is it for uh, for you, for your success see everything in business is talent so what can be more important than talent a business is all about people and when we talk about people it's all about talent and talent both on the softer side and the specific uh, skill set side it's a combination of both so this is one thing which keeps hovering at the back of any leader's mind and so is the case with me that this is the key factor if dixon has to sustain the growth absolutely thanks 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 for this amazing conversation i think i got to learn a lot from you uh, we got to learn a lot about dixon and i got to learn a lot about uh, leadership as well so thank you for this amazing conversation uh, uh, thank you ankit thank you really appreciate it thanks a lot thank you thank you so much atul i really loved where you so poignantly mentioned that business is all about people i think that's a very very transformative statement that a lot of leaders uh, should hear and practice because many a times when we are interacting with the business leaders they do stress a lot about the numbers but the people agenda comes much later and i felt that when ankit you know he was he was also finding it to be very very happy to know that this is such a strong focus for you so thank you thank you so much for mentioning it out thank you so much thank you once again for hosting me it's been a pleasure thanks thank you shambhavi thank you shakti thanks are it thank you so much thanks also thank, thank you thank you so much everyone and on that note i would love to thank the speakers once again um, atul and ankit what an enlightening conversation this has been and for the viewers i'm sure all those milestones those amazing i would say milestones that atul shared into the dixon's transformative journey have been truly invaluable for all of you i was resonating with a lot of points that were shared and i'm sure you also did that on that note i really want to thank once again the viewers for joining in today do not hesitate to reach out to our speakers to explore the newer and broader contours of this critical topic and yes stay tuned for many more conversations coming from our way thank you so much everyone have a fantastic day ahead